Hey everyone, Tristina Dietz Elms here, and I wanted to show you today how to make a mold from Pebio's Silly Gum mold making material. And here's a mold that I made. Um, I have a project that I'm teaching soon that uses crystals. So I actually used real crystals, like you can see here, and I put them into the mold when I mixed the two parts together. You can see here in Pebio's Silly Gum package, we have a part A and a part B. We're going to be measuring those or weighing those so that we get the right amount of the two, their even amounts. And then we're gonna mix them together to create these really fun molds. And then I'll show you how you mix up some of Pebio's resin to put in them. And let me tell you, it's so satisfying once you've made them to just bend it like this and pop them out. And there you go, you have some crystals. And I'll show you up close in a few minutes a whole bunch of them that I've already been making for my class. So come along with me. I can't wait to show you. I'm gonna take you down to the table and we're gonna do this together. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna cut this open. It's in a shrink wrap package and we're going to have our two parts let's get these containers out what i like about these containers is that you can use them over again so as you see here i use the container now um, that i've used up all of the my other 300 milligram set to go ahead and put my crystals in so let's get this The really cool thing that I love about this mold making material is that it firms up in about five or 10 minutes. It's amazing. Um, you're gonna notice there's a little bit of what looks like grease on the top of it. That's because it does have some oil in it. And I just make sure that my hands are clean when I start working with it because it will pick up whatever's on your hands from that oil that's in it. And so now we've got our two parts. Where I turned on my scale, you can see here it says zero. Um, this actually weighs something, but there's a way on a scale to be able to, in this case, push the tear button and then it, it gets rid of the weight of this um, bowl and goes to zero so now I can measure out 50 and 50 of my two and it'll come up correctly so ooh, look at this I have a little bit of um I have a little bit of the glitter from here on my hands so I'm gonna wipe that off real quick like so that I don't get glitter in my mold not that that would be a problem I know the rest of you out there probably love glitter as much as I do there are gonna be some of you that do so remember that this is 150 and this is 150. So I'm gonna pull off what I think is gonna be about 50 of this and let's see what it says. It says 39.4. Let's add a little bit more. And now that's 52. So I'm just gonna take a little tiny bit off of there. Let's see what we have. Okay and just a little bit more. So you don't have to be absolutely perfect. That's 59.6, I'm sorry, 49.6, and that was 50.4. So there we go, we're close enough with that one. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on that to keep it fresh. So that was the white half. Now I'm gonna to try to get it out from underneath my fingernails before I dig into the, the blue because otherwise any little speck of the white that gets into the glue is gonna start the activation and make that hard. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm keeping my blue and my white separated until I'm ready to actually work with the two of them together. So here we go, let's take off a bit here and let's see what we have. That's 34. Here's a little bit more, 43, 52. Now the reason I'm using a scale is that I have used other putties in the past and I did not use a scale. And when I mixed the two parts together, I must have been off enough 
that it did not harden. So I don't want you to have that happen. I recognize that, uh, I mean, I recommend that you find yourself a scale so that you can be sure you've got the right quantities that you're mixing together. There we go. So those two are now the same. It's 50.2. So my two parts are ready to mix together. So again, we've got the part A and the part B, and I have my crystals ready because since this does only take about five minutes to harden, once the two parts are mixed, you wanna be sure that you have whatever you're gonna press into it available here to use right away. So here we go. I'm gonna take these two, and this is exactly what I do to mix them up. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit so you don't have to watch all of that. Any of you who work with polymer clay know what this is like. It really firms up your hands. And as I say, you're gonna do this. You fold it back on itself, you twist it, and that will get your colors mixed together much more quickly. And you might wonder how I got these beautifully flat, because if you are working with a smaller item like we are with the crystals, it's easy to get it flat with a trick and that I will show you in just a second. Okay, you see how this is getting much more homogenized in color? So you see there, that is mixed. And I'm gonna do just a little bit more one more twist and then we're going to mold them up because in about four minutes time this is going to be hard. <laughs> so what I do to make sure that I don't have a lot of creases in it is I at the end I form it into a ball and I really work it. You want to get those creases out of there the best you can because otherwise if you have creases in your mold, you may find that your resin wants to go down in those creases and we don't want that. So let's get this ball nice and smooth, you see there. And now I'm gonna put this down, get it started going flat, and then ta-da, the bottom of this, oh, I'm sorry, the top of this is very smooth, this container. So watch this, I'm gonna be able to create that little lump that I can then see how smooth that is. It's important to have the top as smooth as possible because when you pour your resin in, you're gonna need to be on a level surface because the resin otherwise will um, go to the side that's the lowest. So that's why I like to use something to push on the top and get a nice smooth top before I start shoving these in. Now I'm gonna look at these crystals and see which side I want to have up. So if you'll notice in this one, this side is flat. That's the side that was the top. And then here is the side that has the, um, the shape of the crystal there. So I'm gonna look for the shape that I want to have as the relief that'll become the top. And then I'm gonna shove it down inside the mold making material. In, but if you wait too long or you get interrupted, too bad, so sad, it's going to get hard. Separate them enough so that when you go to put the resin in, you're going to have plenty of space there to pour the resin. And then is there room for one more? Maybe, right there. Okay, now this is still malleable. So I'm, again, I'm gonna take the top of this and I'm gonna force it down in there. So there we go, we have a nice rounded mold and we're gonna wait about another three minutes and then we'll be able to pop those out.
and we will have spaces in there to put the resin just like this. So here are some that I've already made out of clear resin and you can see here that I added um, some glitter to it because I wanted them to shimmer. So then you're able to bend this and pop them out after you make your resin crystals. So there we go. We have all our resin crystals popped out. I'm going to throw them in there. And there you go. Now you see, see I have some of the small crystals here too, which are the ones that were in here. So I have a whole bag of small crystals. And then after I make the resin, I just pop them out and in they go. So like I said, this container's excellent for saving whatever it is that you're molding um, and putting it in here after you've used up all of your mold making material. So we'll wait for a few minutes and I'll show you taking those out. Okay, so here is some of Pebio's resin that I used inside Pebio's mold. So um, here's the one that we just made. Let's go ahead and pop out the crystals. Ah, there we go, look at that. So we've got the shapes now. Ha <laughs> ha, that's fantastic. So we'll take those out and I'll set the real crystals aside. It's like, there we go. Take those out of there. Now I have another mold ready to go to put in some resin. Now Pebio has several different types of resin and what we're gonna work with here is the crystal resin, which is a clear mold making resin. Um, they also have colored resin. So if you see here, this is a, um, an amber color, but they also have a um, magenta, blue, green, and a yellow um, that's already pre-mixed with the color in the package. And then uh, this is one of my favorites too. This is the pearl essent. So if you see here, we've got some that have a pearlescent sheen to them, a mica sheen to them, and that comes in white and in gold. Uh, again, here are the crystal ones that were done with the crystal resin. So uh, let's go ahead without further ado, and I'm gonna move these aside and show you how we actually use this to make these. So here are our molds. What you're gonna to wanna to do first is you're gonna to wanna to level your table. <laughs> so as you can see, my table in the center is very close to level. So I'm gonna set my molds there. The Pebio Jetio resins are a two to one resin. Can you see that there are two parts of A, which is the resin to one part of the hardener. So when you open up the package, you're gonna have your measuring cups. You're gonna have, that's the resin part A, and this is the hardener part B. Now, um, also in the package, you're gonna have a stir stick and you're gonna have a pair of gloves and some instructions. So here we go. I'm going to put on some gloves. Um, inside your box, you're gonna get a clear set of vinyl gloves um, to use. So, and the first time that you do it, you'll already have everything in the box that you need, except for a cup in which to mix the resin. So you just need to get yourself a cup. Now, I also, when I'm filling molds like this, I like to use a pipette. So Pebio has um, these pipettes in packages of five that you can use. So I'm gonna show you how I use that to deposit the resin right in where I want it. So usually um, I will use one cup for resin and one cup for hardener. So um, if I have a Sharpie, I'll write on the bottom which one's resin and which one's hardener. And I try to keep them separated so that it, during a session while I'm working with resin, if I need to go ahead and mix up more, then I have the two separate cups. If I put resin and hardener in the same cup, 
what I may end up having is to have it begin to cure inside that little cup and then I have to clean it before I mix again, which is not a problem. You just clean it, but just in case, um, I like to keep them separated when I do this. And here's a little bit of glitter, so I'm gonna show you how I put some glitter in there after I've mixed up the resin. Now, how long is the resin's work time? It's about, in Florida, 40 minutes. Um, depending on the temperature and the humidity and your altitude, that could change. But what I do like about the Pebios resin is that there is a pretty long uh, work time on it. So let's go ahead. I'm actually going to use only five milliliters of this um, hardener. So on here, these cups have a 10, a 20, and a 30 mark. So I'm actually going to only fill halfway up to the 10 here. So let's do this. So I'm gonna pour it in and then I'm gonna take a look at it to make sure. Oh, and I have a paper towel handy here. So I had slight bit of spillage. Let me take a look at it and see. Yep, that's right about five. Now remember that when you're pouring a liquid like this into a cup that you're going to end up with the edges, what's called the meniscus, kind of going like this, okay, on the edges. So even though it looks here like it's a little bit more than five, it's actually at the five mark, the halfway mark, because there's that little bit of, of creeping up on the sides. So that was the hardener. And then I'm gonna do 10 milliliters of the resin. So that was five there. And then I'm gonna go to the 10 mark here. Okay, I need to put in just a tiny bit more. There we go. So now, as I work with each one of these containers, I close them. <laughs> and now in the cup, I'm gonna put the hardener. Like that. And then I'm gonna put the little cup that goes with the hardener next to the hardener. And then I'm gonna do the resin here. And the resin is really thick, so I'm gonna make sure that I get down in there <laughs> to really get that out of there so I get an accurate measurement. There we go. And then I'm gonna just mix those two parts together. What you'll notice when you start mixing them is that it gets cloudy. I'm gonna bring this up closer to see if you can see that. When the two parts begin to react to one another, it turns cloudy and then I mix them together for about 60 seconds, about a minute. The more I have, I go a little bit longer. So here we go. Get that nice and mixed together and it'll be somewhat water-like. Can you see that? How it really just flows right off of there. Okay. Now you're gonna notice that the more vigorously you mix it and the more the quantity that you have in there, the more bubbles you're going to have. So what lots of artists like to do to get the bubbles out is they just let it sit. So if I were to let this sit for 10 minutes, then most of those bubbles would come out. And then I could start to put it into my molds and I have less likelihood of getting bubbles. Now there are a couple of other tricks that you can do in order to get rid of bubbles if you do have them in your um, resin once you've poured it in the molds. One of those is to spritz the top of the mold with a very fine mist of alcohol and that helps to pull the bubbles out. Or you can also hit it quickly with a torch um, so the heat will cause the bubbles to come out. Not a heat gun, but an actual torch. 
So you can buy mini torches that you can use to get that. Um, just a small flame and right over it. This is silicone. It'll take up to about 400, between 400 and 500 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So it's not a problem at all if you want to run a flame over it quickly. Just don't keep the flame in one place or it will damage your mold. So already quite a few of the bubbles have come out. At this point also, if I didn't have a colored resin like this from Pebio, but I wanted to tint this resin, I could take Pebio's Vitrail paint, which is an oil-based paint, or you can also find a resin tints online. And actually I have some on my online store at tracksartstudios.com. And you can put that inside here in order to tint the color. So again, my favorite thing is to grab a little bit of Vitrail uh, Pebio paint and put only a little bit in there, uh, no more than 10% to volume, and that will tint it for me. And then I can use tinted resin for my mold making as well. So now I'm going to take my dropper and I'm going to go into my cup and I squeeze the bulb at the top and then release the bulb to get the resin to come up inside here. And now I'm going to fill the mold that I had there. So there we go. I'm going to make sure that I fill it up to the top. Here you will notice that there's a big old bubble right there. So usually what I'll do is either take a toothpick or the end of my dropper and just reach in there and get rid of that bubble. Or as I said, you could just spritz the top of it with a little bit of alcohol and that bubble will break. Now in this mold over here, and like I said, you want this to be level because otherwise you're going to get spillage. Um, so on this one, I'm going to put some of these little sparkles in there. So I'm going to take this. I can either put the sparkles directly into my resin and mix them in, or I can sprinkle them on my mold. So like this. This way they're going to be on the top when I pull them out. This way if I mix them in here, they'll be all over mixed inside the resin. So it just depends on what look you want to get. And so here I can literally mix them in and then they'll be in the body of the resin. You see them up inside there? <laughs> this is so much fun. Okay, there you have it. Those are two molds that now have the resin in them. I'm gonna leave those molds for about 24 hours and then I'll be able to pop out my, I'll be able to pop out my crystals just like this. Well, hey, thanks for joining me out here in my outside studio and I hope you enjoyed learning about using Pebio's Silly Gum for mold making and how to use and mix the Pebio Jetio resins in order to put them into the molds. Um, and I'm going to be teaching a class at the Art of the Carolinas in November. I think it's November 8th, um, 2018 at Art of the Carolinas in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we're going to be using these resin crystals for that class. So. If you haven't already, go check that out. That's at artofthecarolinas.com. 
and register for the class if you'd like to take it and you haven't registered already because I know there are just a few spots left there. And um, then I'm also teaching another class on that same evening, it's a Thursday. Um, and so you'll be able to see what classes I have available and I'll put a link down below for that. And leave me your comments. Let me know if you enjoyed the video, if there is anything else that you would like to learn about that I can share with you, as well as hit that subscribe button and then uh, click the bell and that'll let you know when I'm going to be putting out more videos for you. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Bye.